We're here at Intel Develop Forum. I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com, and I'm here with Das Kamhout, who's the senior engineer at Intel IT and also runs the cloud at Intel. We're here in the Intel Developer Zone, software.intel.com, and, and software is a big theme, mobility, and user computing, ease of use. Uh, Intel is really has assembled the alpha geeks in the industry, really working on the next generation platforms that's going to power the future of the data center and uh, mobility. Das, uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. So tell me about the uh, Intel IDF and share with the folks out there what's happening here. Obviously the alpha geeks are assembled and uh, you know they're, they're really eating this story up. So talk about the vision and, and how that relates to the real world. Yeah, so I think it's it's pretty cool. So uh, you know, Intel's seen as you know the core and the the brains of of a lot of what's happening on in, in the industry, and so people feel there's a lot of geeks here. But uh, but Dottie Perlmutter, who uh, you know runs our, our Intel architecture group, just uh, presented a keynote, and what he was talking about is uh, is the the touch of to the humans. He he said the word touch, but really it's about enriching the lives of of everybody on Earth uh, over the next decade. So it's cool to see this focus on the the user experience and how we connect that to. Uh, to the products that are that are underneath the, the hood of basically everything from a phone uh, to to the back end data centers. At SiliconAngle.com, we've been covering since uh, 2010 cloud, mobile, and social kind of before it was fashionable, and that's really where computer science meets social science. And obviously, the consumer applications like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter it gets all the rage. Apple, App Store, and those are the consumer rage right now. But really, what's happening is is a real innovation in the enterprise where businesses who actually power a lot of the workers out there. You run the IT cloud for Intel. Share with the folks out there what this trend and this transformation means for this new era of computing. Uh, it's it's pretty cool. So we look at uh, what Facebook's doing, what Twitter's doing, and actually for us, it's uh, it's helped pushing. It's a catalyst in a way for enterprise shops. So enterprise shops often take a long time to change. Um, even though we we run things, we keep things uh, functioning, we keep the the business working. Right? We do a lot of business to business, but we see this change as as really a, a, a catalyst for us to do things different. And one of the major things that we're driving different is uh, running the data center as software, which is a pretty stark change. But if you look at Facebook and a few others, that's what they've been doing uh, for a while, including Amazon and Google. So it's an inspiring time uh, to work in IT because of these changes that are going on. We've had your CIO on the Cube at HP Discover, Kim, and she talked about big data and all the stuff you guys are doing big data, so I don't think we need to rehash that, but there's a lot of stuff going on in software in particular, uh, in the data center and in the cloud, which is essentially a huge data center. Um, what's going on with this innovation around software? Because the data center, we're hearing that from folks like VMware, EMC, and others like Google, where the software-defined networking, software-defined data center, or software-defined infrastructure is really powering kind of future applications. So can you share with the folks out there what what does that mean, the software-defined data center? Yeah, you got to look at it from two angles. So first of all is, is for the application guys, the guys that are developing code. Um, they want to move quickly. They want to be agile. They're using practices allow them to roll out code daily. And this is a massive change in how IT shops ran in the past. But it's how you know, Etsy is pretty suc successful. If you watched uh, we're at the Velocity conference, there was a lot of talk about um, how you do software quicker. Now, in order to do that, you need the data center to operate in the same fashion. So when we talk about software-defined networks or, or storage as a service or compute as a service, really what we're talking about is exposing all this as software, as APIs that the software developers can basically build their solutions on and be extremely agile. So it's a, it's a stark change from where we were, where there was a lot of button pushers, people, uh, not, not a lot of automation, but switching to the entire data center as a software solution, which is uh, maybe sounds neat and hypey, but in reality it's a massive uh, transformation that's going on in enterprise shops. You know, starting now. You guys are known for being the commodity servers, Intel powers, the data center, multi-cores. You guys obviously have, been, have powered that whole compute revolution. Uh, we've been following David Tui, who we'll talk to later today. Um, storage has changed, right, and so has networking. Can you talk about what that has, has done to the IT department, and what are some of the practical benefits that this new flash storage trends in software, and how that relates to kind of the convergence of the software-led infrastructure? Yeah, so I think we're just at the tip right now. So if you look at uh, if you look at Amazon or a lot of the, the IPDC or uh, the data center uh, cloud service providers, they've been doing a lot of this stuff uh, for a little while now, right? So Google talked about what they're doing with software-defined networks. Um, part of the change that we're seeing is uh, is people starting to use uh, uh, compute uh, for many different roles. But if you look fundamentally at across the entire data center infrastructure, look inside of uh, the networking gear, what's in there? It's usually an Intel brain. Look inside the storage, what's in there? It's usually uh, an Intel CPU, the, the brain. So basically what we're seeing is this transformation of the data center to this massively powerful environment that's exposed through software, 
Uh, and what we, we would love to see, obviously, is, is lots of Intel you know, powering that. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty large change to see that happening across server storage and network. Uh, and it's going on right now. But the reason I say it's a tip, it's just starting for enterprise shops. Can you give some examples where you've seen some practical um, changes in your organization over the past year? Oh, definitely. So, uh, so we went from uh, lots of silos of uh, of teams working on you know 100 servers to to 500 servers to this massive federated environment inside of Intel IT um, that's starting to be exposed as, as APIs. So, what that provides us is you know we can run the environment with a smaller amount of headcount, but give the developers what they need, which is agility to to build on top of the data center. So, we're seeing a pretty large change and another. The key one is we uh, we even have this thing called a cloud sys admin. It's somebody that knows compute or, or server storage and network all together in one package and are able to basically handle that breadth, uh, you know, as one one engineer versus you know having three guys just focus on one type of technology. Talk about some of the changes just in the past four years uh, in IT and specifically Intel. You guys obviously are a leader, a pioneer. There's still the fast followers and then you know the the, the folks after who cross the chasm, if you will. So what's changed in IT? We've seen NoSQL databases, we've seen analytics, we've seen software where we've seen sensors, all kinds of you know uh, network management changes. So, what's changed over the past three years, four years that you've seen? Yeah, and as you said, you know, it's it's the it's the pushers, the fast followers. Um, we're starting to see a lot of those capabilities that have been running the internet uh, starting to get into IT shops, and people starting to understand how that changes how they operate. From uh, taking uh, security logs and being able to use big data uh, capabilities to to scan your environment and see what's really going on and pulling data out, to people starting to realize that they can take a big data solution like uh, you know Google started with MapReduce and you know Yahoo took on with Hadoop um, and starting to take that and use that to how they they deal with their customers um, so you're starting to see all these changes get brought into an IT shop um, in their on-premise solutions and then a the second change we're seeing is that uh, more consumption of, of SaaS which is actually kind of a game changer that we don't talk about a lot but the switch heavily from both consumer software to enterprise software into the SaaS model and what type of changes that implies um, for how we connect data um, across the whole uh, ecosystem. What positions out there for the folks who are looking for to reinvent themselves with a, in IT, whether it's a job function or just a career advancement, or just to, to get their hands on some new tech to play with to help their organization? What new jobs have you seen created? What jobs have been replaced? You mentioned network admin. Um, you know, DevOps is something that's been, been really popular in the cloud movement that's extending into the enterprise. Have you, can you share your, your perspective on these new titles, these new opportunities for folks to looking for growth opportunities? Yeah, there's actually three things we have to see. Uh, so the first is uh, uh, Netflix. Uh, I think they coined the term is called no ops. But basically what that means to us is these cloud sys admins that become invisible. Right, so they're just running this massive in infrastructure at very high scale. So this is a very important role, but they're the ones that allow no ops to happen. Uh, and then we have the DevOps guys. So my personal belief is uh, we need more people doing software development to, to make the industry move faster. And I think enterprise IT shops need to embrace that. Um, it's not just about uh, you know button pushing and, and reading documents. It's about actually pushing the envelope with software. And the third area is cloud integrators. And these are people that are able to, uh, from a technical perspective, understand how do I connect the SaaS solution how do I pull the data back into my environment? How do I connect things through web services? Um, so these three roles of you know powering no ops through cloud sysadmins, software guys on the DevOps space, and the cloud integrators that make it all you know function together seamlessly. Those are those are pretty massive changes, and we're starting to see them you know become more and more real uh, in IT shops. Uh, my final question is, uh, share with the folks out there uh, things that they could do today to start moving in this direction of this modern era of the data center of computing for software-defined infrastructures. Um, so my, my first thing to say is uh, go go out into the open community. Um, there's uh, both OpenStack, which is pretty impressive as a community, pull people together. There's great work going on with uh, software-defined networks, with, with open storage solutions and open compute. Uh, secondly, reach out to things like the Open Data Center Alliance, which bring together IT shops to help and, and push each other uh, moving forward. And then there's either other cool things like what Facebook started with open compute projects. So basically, get familiar with what's going on in the open industry. We're seeing a change that was like Unix to Linux, and it's happening now in the cloud and data space. And so, you know, jump out there, be part of the industry, meet with your peers, and, uh, and really help push all this forward. And they can do it now. Okay, we're at Das Cam out here in the developer zone at IDF, Intel Developer Forum 2012. Uh, this is John Furrow, Silicon Angle. Um, thanks for watching.